Hello, everybody. It's Greg Martin here and Andrew Gar. We're doing another Today I Learned in R, where I teach Andrew something, Andrew teaches me something, and you guys get to watch us both learn. Andrew, how are you today? I'm doing great, Greg. I'm always uh, always excited to check in with you. Um, if anyone's finding, for the people that are finding this vid through my channel, please make sure you subscribe to Greg's excellent channel, R Programming 101. And of course, if you're watching this through my channel, go and check out Equitable Equations. I always learn great stuff there, all about R and R programming and a lot of good statistics. So uh, check it out, definitely. Andrew, why don't you start today and teach me something about R? All right, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and share my screen here. Give me one second to, uh, to click that button. Okay. So um, I want to talk about um, something I learned recently when combining observations. So we're in a situation where we have a couple of different data frames that have the same variables. And um, these are both taken from the um, msleep data set. They're just a couple of observations from that set, really small versions. In each of these two sets, I have just the name and the genus. And so these two columns match up exactly. Historically, I've used rbind. To combine these and so I'll just go ahead and execute that and you can see there that I have all four of those observations um, put together that's wonderful the thing that I learned lately is a way that I can keep track of which data set those are coming from and um, that's the sort of tidyverse version of our bind which is bind underscore rows and if I do the, exactly the same thing m sleep one comma m sleep two I get exactly the same output, but now I have an additional option. I can add in a dot ID argument um, to specify the name of a new column that's going to track where that data is coming from. So for instance, um, let's say I want a new column, let's call it researcher. Maybe these are two different researchers that are uh, getting the information. And you can see I now have researcher one for Nice. the cheetah and dog, researcher two for the cow and goat. So, you know, I, I sometimes have to combine large numbers of data sets and I want to keep track of where they're coming from. This ends up being a really uh, simple, useful way to do it. Okay, I love that. I did not know that. So I've learned something today that I didn't know before. Thank you very much for that, Andrew. I'm interested that you taught us something that's got like a dot something, and I'm going to do the same thing with what I'm going to teach you. You may or may not know this. So people watching this, like this, none of this is rehearsed. Before, before we do this, Andrew hadn't told me what he's going to teach me. I haven't told him what I'm going to teach him. So I'm coming at this cold. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, can you see that, Andrew? Yes, I can. Okay, as always, at the very top, Tidyverse, and we're going to be looking Mm-hmm. at the Star Wars data set, which we do a lot of, Yeah. and people that watch either of our channels, you've seen the Star Wars data set many, many times. The thing that I'm going to, that I'm, that I've, that I've discovered recently, and you may, may, may or may not know, is that you don't always have to say group by. No. There's another little trick you can use if you want your start, if you want your coding to look a little neater. And if you look at what I've done here, the first thing I've done is drop in a, so that's just to drop all the missing values from these two variables. Then summarize, I'm creating a table um, and I've said average height. Usually before we get to the summarize, we've said group by, and in this case, we would have said group by species. Now I'm saying summarize, create a, create a column called average height. In that column, stick the mean height for each of these observations. And then I'm saying comma dot by species instead of group by. Now it does the same thing. And you might say, well, I could just say group by, which is fine. E either, either works. And you're welcome to just do it the way you've always done it. The reason it's important to kind of, firstly, this is slightly a, a slightly neater way of coding. So I kind of like it. But secondly, even if you don't use this notation, it's good to know because you might see this in someone else's code, or you might be collaborating with somebody that codes in this way. And when you see it, you'll be like, yeah, I know exactly what that is. That's the same as group by. Um, and so I, I found this quite a useful thing to learn. Um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to code like this. I think it's kind of quite nice. And uh, I, I thought it's, it's a neat little trick. And I'm, it's just interesting that we both did a little dot something lesson today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know that the um in the case of the dot ID, it's um I I well in, in, at least in many cases in the tidyverse, they use the dot when they want to distinguish an argument name from something that where the function might get confused with a column of the same name. You know what Yeah. I mean? So like you might have a column called ID, for instance, and so they put dot ID so 
there's that distinguishing feature. I don't we, know if that's the we, case with the with the summarize or not, but it's definitely we should do fun. a whole uh, today I learned where we just deal with dots. Yeah, so, because there's sometimes when you want to use the dot when you don't want the output of a previous line of code that's being piped into the next line of code, and you don't want it to be the first argument. You want it yep. to be an argument that's kind of slightly uh, sort of down the line in, in your arguments, and you can use a little dot. And yep. and unless someone tells you that, it's not obvious. Yeah, one of the one of the um, critiques of the dot, just in general, I know this is um, that it can have so many different meanings, yeah. and this is particularly true in more object oriented languages, um, yeah. where it, it just can mean twenty different things. Um, yeah. In R, we run into that a little bit less, but only a little bit. Yeah, 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 we yeah. So often use the underscore, I think, for um, Andrew. What, while I'm talking to you, should we give a quick plug for the book that we're writing? Oh, absolutely. Tell it. Yeah, Greg, you tell us what kind of book are we writing here? Well, it's not. A, it's not a novel. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> There's a thought. The people that have been watching the Today I Learned series would have noticed a couple of months ago we, on the show, sort of agreed that we would write a book, and we have been doing that. And it's a book about our particularly about the tidyverse, which is, you know, a way, a way of coding that is really human orientated. Um, we've really enjoyed writing it. We've actually got sort of version one ready, but it's, we're in the editing phase now, which is a lot of kind of spell check and, you know, making it all look pretty. Uh, but it is in the pipeline and we've got a publisher and it's all going to happen. So, you know, watch the space. Very excited for that. And uh, it's been a real pleasure working with you on this. So uh, everybody keep your eyes open for that. We'll make sure you know about it. Yeah, well, listen, Andrew, thanks for your time. Always good to chat. Always a pleasure, Greg. Take care of yourself. Take care. All the best. Bye. Bye-bye.